everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, I'm Graham Sows. This video tutorial is a little bit different, as I'm sure you're noticing, because it's going to show you how to use Brother Canvas Workspace for SVGs. I'm sure you remember two years ago, I filmed one for Cricut and how to use the SVGs in Cricut Design Space. And back then I said I would film one for the brother. Of course, life got in the way. I got busy, things kept getting pushed back, but I decided today is the day I'm going to sit down and I'm going to record this for you. So this is going to be helpful for those of you who are new to using SVGs. It may be helpful for those of you who are deciding on which system to buy. There's definitely a personal preference. I don't think it's wrong to have either one. They both serve the same purpose. It's just really a personal preference on which one you like, which one you think you'll be more comfortable with. So this little video tutorial may help you in seeing what the different options are that it has. So if you're at that stage where you're deciding which one to get, definitely watch the one I filmed on Cricut just to see what that software looks like so that you're familiar with that. And then you can come back and decide on this one. Now I will mention, this is the free version that I'm using of Canvas Workspace because I don't actually own a physical brother scan and cut, but this is the free version. So if you go into Google and you type in Canvas Workspace, you can actually use this free version. And the reason why I have this is of course for this tutorial, but also I do make SVGs for many designers and I like to test them before I send them back to the designers to make sure that they work and that there's not going to be any issues when those people who use Brother Canvas Workspace go to open their SVGs, they open properly and they'll cut properly for them. So it's a way for me to test my SVGs. I test them in Cricut and I test them here. So you can use the free software. Now I know with Cricut, when we get Cricut, you download the software with it, you plug in your machine, it connects to your machine, and so your brother Scan and Cut will have the same option. I do know it has that as an option, but the free one works just as well. So things may be in a different spot, so maybe project will be over here. It may be a bit different depending on the software that you're using, if you're using the free or the one that you get to download. It just depends, but all the... Um, features and the steps will be the same. So the first thing you need to do when you're using an SVG is of course, download it from the designer's website. And when you download it from the designer's website, it's going to come in a zip file. So it's going to look like this. It's going to have this little zipper when you download it and it'll save to your download folder, wherever you save your downloads when you download them. But it'll look like this. This is the incorrect format to use for a cutting system, you have to extract this to get it to be the correct format. So what you do is you download it. Now it's here, it's saved onto my system. I'm going to right click on it, click extract or unzip. So extract or all or unzip all. It opens up this window. You can decide where it saves to your system. You can name it something different. I'm just going to leave this and I'm going to click extract. And what happens is it has saved it here to my desktop because that is where I selected it to go so that it's easier to find. So I'm not trying to scroll through all my folders to try and find it while I'm doing this little video for you. So it has saved it here. So when I click on this, it opens up and it looks like that. So that is now the correct format to use in my electronic cutting machine. So you want to make sure you're using this one, not the one you downloaded from the designer's website, the one you extracted or unzipped. So back to Brother Workspace. Now, oftentimes I get messages or comments about, oh, I downloaded the uh, SVG, I've imported it into Brother, and I got this warning saying it changed the size. What's going on? I'm going to show you what happens. So we go here to import. We're going to choose this file, and it's this one here. I called it test SVG just for this little video. Open. Okay. See this morning here that the shape was larger than the mat. It was reduced in size when imported. That is because my mat here is 12 by 12. So my squares, which I made for my SVG to be eight by eight, are now 4.94. And that's because these SVGs were made to go on a 12 by 24 mat. So because we're trying to fit it onto the 12 by 12 mat, it reduces the size of the pattern pieces. So if you go to cut these out like this, they will be incorrect and your pattern will not go together properly. You will have pieces that are too small. So when we make SVGs or when I make SVGs, and I know others do it this way, I make them to fit on the 12 by 24 mat because that seems to be the mat that is more, not standard, but more used because with 
Cricut and Brother, they come with those mats. And I know there's other systems that have larger mats, but this just seems to be more of the standard size, I guess you could say, that is used. So we use the 12 by 24 mat. So to prevent this from happening, you have to change this to a 12 by 24 mat. So I'm going to go create new project. I'm going to leave this because this is wrong. I'm going to go over here where it says project. I'm going to click on it. And you have this area size. And see how it's selected 12 by 12 right now? We want to always change that to 12 by 24, as I just did. And you'll notice my mat is now bigger and 12 by 24. So now let's upload or import that exact same SVG again. Choose file, test SVG, open, OK. And there we go. We didn't get a warning. So when I click on this, now my square is an accurate 8 inches. And that's what you want. So just to be safe, always change your mat to the 12 by 24 and you'll not have any issues because like I said, it is, I guess you could say the standard size and it just makes it easier so that you don't run into any issues when trying to cut because the last thing you want to do is start cutting out all your, your pattern pieces and you've cut out, say, maybe your favorite vinyl or cotton and all of a sudden the pattern pieces are wrong and you go to put the bag together and it doesn't fit. And it's just really frustrating. You don't want that. So change it to the 12 by 24. Now you have these two pieces here on the mat. These are just two squares. Like I said, I just made this for this little tutorial. And you have this little square right here. Now the difference between Brother and Cricut is Cricut will leave these the colors that are chosen when the SVG is made. So when I make my SVGs, my squares here, the little test squares are a different color. So it just depends on the designer I've made them for, red, blue, green, it doesn't matter, it's whatever color. But Brother always changes them to a solid black. Some designers like to make their pattern pieces different colors depending on where the pattern piece is going. So for example, exteriors may all be yellow, linings may be blue. Unfortunately, when you get it into Brother, you don't know what the colors are anymore. So you do need to pay attention to the mat name and always make sure you're following your cutting chart. That is the most important thing I can say, no matter what. Have your cutting chart out, refer to your cutting chart, refer to the pattern before you start cutting so that you don't cut any pieces incorrectly. So this square here will always be there. It's a one inch test square and it's the same thing as your paper pattern pieces. There is that test square to ensure that your pattern pieces that are on your paper, or in this case, the mat, are the correct size. So if this measures one inch, you know it's correct. But with squares and rectangles, circles, you can always check by clicking on it and see that it is the right size, and it is. Now, if it's those odd shapes, you can't, and that's why this one inch square is super important to have. Now, you don't need to cut this one inch square out. What you can do is have it selected, and then go up here to your trash can and just click it, and that, that'll delete it. If you don't wanna delete it, you just click this little undo button here, and it'll undo it. The nice thing about this, the little test square is you could cut it out of the material you're using, and say you have a little book that has you know, what bag you're making and you wanna keep track of what materials you've used, you can actually cut this little test square out as a swatch and you can put it in that book and then you'll know exactly what it was and you can write down the information. This is the color, this is where I got it, this is the date I got it, and then you have this little swatch of material for you to refer back to. So that is a little option, but you don't need to cut it out every time. So say you have a bunch of these exterior pieces you have to cut, definitely remove that one inch square all the other times, only need to cut one out. So there's the one inch square selected, you know it's one inch, so you know that these are going to be the correct size. Now, because I don't have the actual scan and cut system, I can't physically take this and go cut this out. But what I would do is click download and then you would get this screen and it would tell you here what to do. Now, anybody who is watching this, if you own a scan and cut machine, could you please let us know in the comments below if it is similar to Cricut where when we take it to the step to go cut it, we get to the point where we can select the materials that we wanna cut, so vinyl, foam, things like that. You can select the pressure of the blade and then the system itself tells you what blade to use. So whether it's a knife or a rotary cutter, I'm not sure if this system does this. So if anybody's watching this who has that machine, I would really appreciate it if you could put that in the comments and I know everybody else would, it would be really helpful because I don't have that, so I don't know. But this is where you would go to cut that out. Now this here, again, one inch square measures, I know those are correct, I can cut. Now, say you're using a pattern that doesn't have squares and rectangles and you wanna cut them out and they don't have them in paper pattern pieces or they didn't include them in the SVGs, whatever the reason is. 
what you can do is, so we're going to create a new area or a new mat. I'm going to change it to that 12 by 24. Over here, we have basics. And this has all the different shapes. So you have, you know, everything you could, not everything, but almost everything you could possibly want. So you want to do a square. So here's the square right here. Now, this may not be the right size. You may need it to be 11 by 11. You could click in the corner and drag it until it gets to 11 by 11. I find this a little bit difficult because it's not easy to get it to the accurate size. It jumps around a little bit too much. So I find that a little bit difficult. Instead, what I like to do is make sure it's, I've clicked on the square here, right click when you're in the square and you'll get this menu that opens up. Go to properties, click this maintain aspect ratio. I unclick that, 11 by 11 and I just change it. And now I have a perfect 11 by 11 inch square. And that's all you need to do. You can do that with your, you know, any of these shapes here, you can change them to whatever size you want, but this is really helpful. Or maybe you wanna make some, you know, uh, applique on a bag and you wanna do a heart, an applique heart, and you wanna cut it out with your Cricut first. So you, or not your Cricut, sorry, your brother. You can definitely do that. You just click it here, you open it up, get it to the size you want, cut it out, you're done. Really super easy. I love that it has this option for these different shapes because, you know, if you don't get it with the pattern, you could still cut it out here. You also have different borders that you can use. You also have logos here. So if you're like me and you make your own shirts, you can use these logos here or you can even sew these onto the front of your bag or whatever it is that you're making it making. And then you have some texts here. And I really like this one and this one. I think these are really cool. So you have a couple of different options. The one thing I say always recommend to do is to, you know, play around with the options, check out the features. I don't have a machine hooked up, so I know nothing is going to get cut, but I can play around and see what this has to offer and check it all out and get familiar with it. So you'll definitely want to do that. You've got this edit up here where you can undo, you can flip things, you want to mirror something. So especially if you're cutting uh, a shirt and you're having words on a shirt, you need to mirror that because when it goes to print on the shirt, you don't want it backwards. So you have to mirror it. So play around with the options to find out what the different options are here. If you'd rather have it in metric or imperial, you can change it here. The choice is yours. Again, play around with everything. See what's here. I find a lot of the options the same or similar to Cricut. I do find this very user friendly. I have no issues with it at all. I do play around with it every once in a while. I'll come in and I'll check it out and I'll just do a couple of different things, try out different things, see how it how it works. I really do like that. The only thing that I find different that I find maybe a thumbs down is that when you do upload those pattern pieces, so I'll show you again. When you upload these pattern pieces that they're solid black, I do like that Cricut leaves them the colors that they were made by the designer. I do like that. It makes it a little bit easier, but this doesn't impede you, it doesn't stop you from cutting, it's still the same thing at the end of the day. It's just a thing for me that I find a personal preference. So this here tutorial, I hope it is helpful. Maybe you're deciding which machine to get and this has helped you here, or maybe you know, you've know you started with the brother and you're not really sure how to use it or you've run into that issue where your mats you know, end up being the wrong size and it changes your pattern pieces. I hope that has helped answer the question. Just play around with it, have fun. So thank you for watching this. I hope it was helpful. And anybody who has a brother, if you know what it does when you get to that step that I was mentioning after when you go to cut where you can select your fabric, your, your blades and your pressure, if it has that, can you please comment below so anybody who is looking at getting this machine, if they're wondering, they'll have that answer as well. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. Have a wonderful day. Happy sewing.